Hi, you guys, Dave Mad Max 6, and we're back with the doc. Uh, we were in a little bit of a hiatus, a uh, lot going on over here, but we're back now, so we're going to get started right away with your questions, you guys. Sorry for the little delay, uh, but keep sending a question. We really like it. We're very, very happy to uh, answer that for you. Doc is, is the man. So uh, here's the question number one, doc. Um, hey, David, doc is the man. There you go. This guy just said it. Also, thanks to you. I was wondering if I can do a follow-up question to sleep apnea TRT. I'm a 43-year-old male. I do have sleep apnea, which I am treating. I got my CBC lab report back and my HGB hemoglobin, which is uh, 15.1 gram per deciliter, and my HCT hemocrit, which is 44.1. These numbers show that the deep sleep, uh, the sleep apnea therapy is working. Um, and someone's trying to call at the same time. <laughs> so, um, so it's safe to say uh, it's working. So is it safe to say I can start a blast of test cypionate for 600 milligrams a week for 12 weeks and then cruise at 150 uh, milligram for 16 weeks and repeat this protocol for the rest of my life? Uh, also, does Dr. Rand know of any doctor in NYC that he recommends? Thanks, guys. Love the series. Very helpful. Last part of the question. Any doctor if, where? In, uh, in New York City. Oh. If you uh, have any uh, compadre over there. Or... I don't right offhand, but uh, with regard to the sleep apnea, yeah, obviously the treatment is working because uh, to have a hemoglobin and hematocrit of I think it was 15.1 and 44 is actually pretty close to optimum. A lot of people nice. think that uh, you need a very high hemoglobin uh, in order to achieve, you know, endurance greatness, if you will. You really don't. I mean, we've, we've come to find that there's so many other factors involved um, in... Uh, in endurance and in, in the ability to you know achieve things a athletically yeah hemoglobin carries oxygen but um, you know you need the buffering systems within the cell your mitochondria have to be operating properly etc so uh, to go above you know I'd say 16 16 and a half is really unnecessary uh, and I mentioned this just because I know it's a little off topic but um, when I tell people mm, you know your H&H &H is a little high you probably have sleep apnea um, I tell them that, you know, essentially they're training in their sleep. You know, you're dropping your oxygen saturation enough where you're telling your body to create more hemoglobin. And they go, you can see it, you know, hitting like, wow, so I'm getting the best of both worlds. I'm snoozing and I'm training, you know. I don't have to do cardio anymore. Uh, the problem is the blood just gets too thick. And, um, you know, it's kind of the analogy I use. Like, you know, you get a bigger pickup or you get a bigger um, bed in your pickup truck, but you got too many trucks on the highway. So you're not really getting anywhere with what you're trying to do. And, mm -hmm. and really, I have some, uh, some world champion uh, athletes in different sports, endurance sports, that uh, have hemoglobin below 15 even. And I try and keep patients around 15 and a half hemoglobin. And just FYI, hem hematocrit is roughly uh, three times uh, hemoglobin. So, you know, I, I say... Yeah, 15 hemoglobin roughly means 45 hematocrit. So, um, again, it sounds like his uh, his therapy is working because, I mean, there's a reason why even endurance athletes will use testosterone because, you know, it leverages that ability of the body to create more red blood cells and, and build more hemoglobin. And, um, again, that's what tips me off when I, I see somebody with a 17-8 hemoglobin. I go, okay, you must not be breathing well at night. So, uh, yeah, apparently his therapies work as far as the testosterone goes. I mean, I, you know, a standard replacement dose is about uh, one cc of testosterone cypionate, 200 megs per ml uh, per week to see, you know, then how treatment goes, how fast you metabolize it, how you don't. Um, I will add, though, that there are some studies showing that um, as much as 600 milligrams per week, and, you know, it's not going to be adopted by the AMA mm -hmm. probably in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there are some side effects, of, you know, that, that, that come into play here. One of which is what, to what we're referring, and you know, what testosterone gets converted into, yeah. estrogens and uh, dihydrotestosterone. But um, as long as you keep those under control, uh, you know, to use Chris Bell's uh, movie title, you know, you can get bigger, stronger, faster without, uh, you know, negative side effects. But I don't. I'm not. I can't. I can't recommend that mm -hmm. uh, to anybody. It's it's not uh, standard of care. But, um, yeah, you, you I mean, would say it's a safe range, though, 200 to 600. It's... 
Well, I'm just I'm mentioning you know some studies, and and and, and I use the joke. And please, if you're Hungarian, don't take this the wrong way. But you know, well, I won't even say that. I I usually say you know some of these studies that are out there, uh, you know, are horrible. Uh, and I say you know you know the Hungarian Journal of Bad Science. Uh, but there's some uh, there's some studies that were poorly done. In other words, um, and and uh, you know people will quote those. Uh, I'm talking about, and there aren't a whole lot in, in English and in our system because we're not interested in that here. I say we, you know, the, the established medical community. But um, there are some studies showing that when you increase the dose like that, uh, as long as you watch, again, for things like estrogen excess and dihydrotestosterone excess, and, of course, the effects of those being, for example, um, uh, elevated H and H, because they found now that you know when your DHT goes high, it tends to promote erythropoietin release and therefore, you know, more red blood cells, etc. So as long as you you keep an eye on those, which is the way it's supposed to be done, period. Mm -hmm. Which is why I encourage everyone to actually use their doctor, mm -hmm. you know, not just for the regular checkups, but particularly when you're training and you're you know using some of these techniques that they're choosing to use. Just you know. Not everyone falls nice and neatly underneath yeah. the bell curve, so yeah. make sure you're doing okay. Because if you're yeah. an outlier, you know you want to make sure that, uh, or if you have sleep apnea, that it's not harming you. Yeah. You know? And and, and uh, well, I guess I've probably said enough about sleep apnea. Keep that under control. Yeah. There's a great company, by the way. I don't get a free toaster from them or anything, but um, <laughs> Novasom does at-home sleep studies, and uh, it seems to me most insurance companies are covering them. So, uh, you know, if you go to your GP and say, hey, you know. I, I think I've got an issue here, you know, especially if you're, if you have to use another espresso to get going in the morning, uh, and you're using, you know, certainly excess testosterone, quick comment, um, you know, usually with a replacement dose, you're okay, but, uh, you know, if, if you don't have sleep apnea, but even if you don't have sleep apnea, once you go above one cc a week, you tend to make more and more H and H anyway. So, um, if you're in that category with sleep apnea anyway, ask your doctor for this Nova, uh, Novasom at-home sleep study kit. It comes in a box about yay big. You hook it up to yourself, and then you plug it into your wireless to send the report, and you're done. And and I think they like doing that because it's cheaper than you know a UCLA mm -hmm. fully staffed yeah. uh, uh, sleep study. So anyway, cool. yeah. Thank you, doctor. Okay, next question. I'm in my early 20s and I have been told by my primary physician that I need to be put on TRT. I was wondering what the doctors thought were on using aromacin as, a, uh, as an AI long term versus using Arimidex. I have read that aromacin is lipid friendly, may increase IGF-1 and lower SHBG, which increase the ratio of free to bound testosterone. Well, you know, before I answer what I think the main question is, Early, it was it early twenties? Yeah, that's unusual. Mm. Uh, you know, that's when you're supposed to be in your prime. So the first thing I would submit is, uh, with all due deference to his GP, and I don't, I didn't get the full story, obviously. And all this is not meant to be medical advice, as mm -hmm. we disclaim early on. Yeah, but yeah. first thing that comes to mind is let's figure out why you have low testosterone at such a young age. Um, you know, one uh, secondary uh, issue could be. The pituitary has, uh, and it's not usually cancerous, but a, a microadenoma uh, where, you know, you've got a little tumor on the pituitary. The pituitary is about, you know, yay big, right underneath the, the brain, and it sends a signal to the testicles to make testosterone. If there's a little tumor there, uh, you might be disrupting that signal, and that might be worth investigating because instead of having to start treatment for the rest of your life, uh, if they, and they go up, you know, pretty easily through the mouth. Mm -hmm. Surgery surgery, I don't mean to make it seem like it's no big deal, but it's relatively minor mm -hmm. compared to some other surgeries, you know, open heart surgery. Um, and you remove the tumor and, and you're back in action. You might want to investigate, in other words, a little further to see if it's testicular, you know, primary hypogonadism or secondary. But uh, to your question, um, I'm not sure the reason for the aromacin or remedex, the, the estrogen uh, production blockage, but um, certainly if you're going to use replacement therapy, almost invariably uh, you have to use something to block the conversion from testosterone into estrogen. If the question is, getting to the point I think, 
uh, uh, what he's asking me, aromacin versus aromadex, mm -hmm. there are some differences. Uh, aromacin isn't quite as effective, and we're really kind of slicing hairs. I forget the percentages, but you know, 85% versus 93% at reducing the quantity of estrogen. Yes, there's a dosage uh, that comes into play, you know, if you use more or less of the other, but um, aromacin is what we call a suicide inhibitor. Um, and before we get into too much physiology that probably nobody cares about, mm -hmm. um, my preference is simply using an aromatase inhibitor like a Remedex. There's also something called uh, Letrozole, which goes under the brand name Femora, which is actually a more effective uh, aromatase inhibitor, meaning, um, you know, you can reduce your estrogen even further with a, with a smaller dose uh, that actually lasts longer of Letrozole. But Letrozole was shown to increase the liver enzymes a bit, mm -hmm. certainly a bit more than an Astrozole when they were inventing these uh, products. All Which one? I was going to ask you this question actually. Which one do you prefer the most out of all these guys? To me, it's a no-brainer. Use an astrazole. Uh, okay. Why? Because you block the conversion from testosterone into estrogen to begin with, which is preserving the very thing that you're putting on board or trying to promote. Mm -hmm. um, and I, let me come back to that in a minute because uh, it applies to, to, I think, to this gentleman. Um, and then you're, you know, obviously reducing the estrogen to a certain degree it's it, you know we do need some estrogen as right. guys you know it's it's not one of those things where you're trying to eliminate it mm -hmm. uh, you need some estrogen for brain health for cardiovascular health for joint health uh, but it's a little amount right. um, and it's tends to be a steady amount you know girls need big swings in estrogen for reproductive purposes mm -hmm. and obviously we're not plumb that way and it can be a disaster for us yeah. and I'm going a little far off topic here but you know there's side effects that are usually attributed to steroids uh, which are really from excess estrogen, you know, making you guys and females moody and irascible, you know, yeah. along with holding water, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, but to the point about um, uh, reducing SHBG, that's really not so much aromacin versus aromadex as it is. And by the way, an astrazole, I use the term interchangeably sometimes, I apologize, but an astrazole is just the generic for the brand Arimidex. Right. Okay, but arom aromacin versus Arimidex isn't about the drug itself, it's about what the drug is doing. There's a sweet spot of roughly 15 to 20 picograms per milliliter of estradiol, and we use estradiol because it's the most prevalent estrogen. We use that as a surrogate marker for all the estrogens, but using that as a, as a, as a gauge that sweet spot, and it occurs, you know, there's t a tipping point, I guess I should say, uh, somewhere around 21, in my experience, under which all of a sudden, SHBG drops and free testosterone, therefore, goes up. So you're getting more juice for the squeeze from your, you know, your total testosterone. Instead of an average of, say, 2%, uh, you might get 3% free testosterone. And for all the non math wizards out there, you know, who say, well, big deal. 1% increase. It's not a 1% increase. Going from 2% to 3% is a 50% increase in what's free and available to you. Right. So, you know, a, a, a Remedex is very important for all that, and we've gone through this before, all the bad, limiting all the bad side effects of too much estrogen. Uh, but I think it's the ideal way to, to govern it. And maybe in this uh, gentleman's case, what's happening is he's got low T because his liver is, is converting too much testosterone into estrogen, and maybe the doc is just using uh, one of these two substances, again, my preference would be a Remedex, mm -hmm. to stop that conversion, therefore raise his, free, his total T, because you're not converting into estrogen anymore, mm -hmm. getting more juice for the squeeze by getting in that sweet spot, and that's, you know, you, again, you need some, so I say, you know, anything less than 15, and you start to run the risk of uh, not having enough estrogen on board. Um, and maybe he's going to govern it that way. Gotcha. All right. Thank you, Doc.